at Legacy Church. We are so excited that you've chosen to join us today for Wednesday in the Word. We really appreciate it. And if you'd do me a favor, would you hit that like button and that share button and maybe even drop a comment, just let us know that you're here. And I like to think of that share button as just me inviting my entire Facebook friends list to come to church with me on a Wednesday night. So we always appreciate when you do that and help us out. If I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, my name is Chase Morris and I am the youth pastor here at Legacy Church. I get to work with the greatest students in the world at the greatest church in the world and I'm not biased, I promise. But I'm so excited to be able to share with you for just a few moments this evening. And you know, I've really done my part these last six months or so to try to keep up with all that's happening in the world around us. And when I say that and I roll my eyes a little bit, you understand what I mean, that things just keep coming. It just, things keep changing every day. And it's not little things most of the time. It's like big things that keep changing all the time. You've got to do your part to kind of stay somewhere in the news cycle just to know what the rules are basically that we have to live by in the middle of a pandemic. And I can remember back when this pandemic first started, I remember so specifically it was a Wednesday night and all the major sports leagues canceled the rest of their seasons. And that's when I knew. That's when I remember just knowing this is a big deal. And you had two schools of thought when all that started to happen. You had the school of thought that thought, you know, hey, it's going to be two weeks. We'll get back to normal. This will be just like a bad flu case. And then you had the other school of thought of people saying, no, no, no. Get ready for a new normal. That was the phrase. That was the words that I kept seeing people say. Get ready for a new normal. Because what you thought of as normal is it's not available to you anymore. This is going to change a lot. Get ready for a new normal. And, and that frustrated me at first to think about a new normal. I didn't want to let go of what was normal. I liked what was normal. And hearing people say new normal, it was just that things were going to change. And I never thought that I could get used to living in the middle of something like this. But here we are, however many months later since that, and I've gotten kind of used to it. I've gotten somewhat used to the fact that things change dramatically all the time, that the speed of change is so quick. I've kind of gotten used to it in a way. Now, don't get me wrong, I still get frustrated. I still get annoyed with how quickly everything changes. It gets on my nerves, it does. It just gets on my nerves like it does all of us. Having to try to keep up with everything that's going on, it just, it can become frustrating and when I say that I'm kind of used to it and it's kind of become normal, that doesn't mean that I don't get annoyed with it from time to time. And I remember sort of at the beginning and maybe even a little bit further in where we all sort of had to start realizing this is changing things and how we're going to live. Whether this lasts a long time, not a long time, we just have to face the facts that right now in this moment, it's changing things. You saw Facebook arguments. Those are still happening. You saw Facebook arguments, people in their own family just getting mad. And really what I feel like it boiled down to a lot is you do what you want to do, but don't try to come for what I call normal. Don't try to come at me for what's normal in my life. You can't take away my sense of normal. I've built my life upon these values right here and don't come in and try to mess that up. That's what I call normal. And there's nothing wrong with normal. Normal's okay. Normal's good. We like normal. Uh, basically, I think of normal as just there are certain things that I can assume will happen. They'll happen at this time. I'll wake up every morning. This will happen. And then that will happen. And these are the things that I consider normal. Maybe what you considered normal was the fact that you could go see your family whenever you wanted. Maybe that was something that felt normal to you. Maybe normal was, I'm going to wake up in the morning. I've had a steady job for the last 15 years. I'm going to go to work at this job. That's what's normal in my life. Maybe normal was college football is coming in a couple of months. we got college football to look forward to. Maybe that was normal for you. And maybe normal was my kids are going back to school after this spring break. 
or maybe my kids are going back to school in the fall. And those things were fine for a long time, but for better or for worse, whether you like it or not, a lot of those things are in question for people now because we built them on a foundation of normal that wasn't very steady. We built them up to something that really apparently we couldn't rely on quite like we thought we could. And wanting normal, desiring normal, is normal. It's okay to want normal and desire normal. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we look through Scripture, and, and I've looked through Scripture a lot in light of all that has happened, searching for answers because we've all been confused. When we look through Scripture, sometimes I understand that God is wanting to take us away from what we think is normal. God is wanting to move us on to something different. And if we get so stuck in what is normal to us and refuse to move with Him, we step out of the life where we can live where God's blessings flow. And I don't know about you, but I want to keep my life in the light of God and His blessings. If we refuse to move, we can take ourselves out of that. Now, talking about a pandemic, I want to make one thing clear. I don't think that God wanted us to uh, get a different sense of normal, and so He sent a pandemic. That's not what I think, but I think in the midst of it, God is showing us something. God is taking us into a new thing where right now we don't have the option as much to stay in our sense of normal. We have to go and do something else, and God's using that. So I want to bring out a story in Scripture. It's found in Isaiah 43, and I'm going to start in verse 14 here in just a second. And leading up to this, this is the prophet Isaiah. He's prophesying. He's going through these things that are going to happen. Basically, he's saying not long before this that Jerusalem is going to fall to Babylon. And the way of life for these people is going to be absolutely destroyed. The way of life that they are used to is going to no longer be available to them. It's going to change. But now, through Isaiah, God brings a message of hope for these people. So I want to read this. Isaiah 43, starting at verse 14. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes, I will send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I really like how this translation says that. Flee in those ships that they're so proud of. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the seas. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves, and they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. All that's really, really awesome to hear about. It's exciting. But here's what he says in verse 18. But forget all of that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me, the jackals and owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Now, what does that mean for you and I? For me, as somebody living in 2020, reading that is really exciting to hear. And it's not because I think that prophecy is specifically meant for you and I living in America in 2020. No, it's clear. God is talking about Israel in this chapter through Isaiah. But I'm happy to serve a God who's gone on record as saying, hey, I know I did some cool stuff in the past, and I know things are tough right now. Don't even worry about it. Don't be so fixated on the things in the past that you neglect to realize that I've got bigger things planned for you. I'm paraphrasing just a little bit. This is, this is the Chase Morris version of what God said. But God said, basically, forget all that cool stuff that I did because what's coming is better than all of that. The area we struggle with and the area that they struggle with is seeing that it's happening. You ever get frustrated at somebody in a movie, a TV show, reading a book. I'm getting frustrated at these people reading the Bible. They're saying, he's saying, do you not see it? I'm doing something, but you guys aren't seeing it. And God wants them to see it, but it's really easy for us to read their story and say, how do you not see it? 
But one day somebody could read the story of 2020 and get to the end and they get, get to read about it in a book and they don't have to live it and they can see clearly how God was moving through the whole thing. But you and I have a tough time seeing that because we are in the middle of it right now. It's, it's difficult. How often does God want to do something new? But we, you and I both, guilty of this I'm sure, just sit in the old and wonder, what happened to God? What happened to God's presence? I don't feel God's presence like I once felt it. It's because we're sitting in the old and God's moved on to the new and he said, can't you see it? Won't you come with me? And we wanted to stay in what was normal to us. We refused to leave what was normal. On a typical Wednesday for me, I'll come into the youth room at the church and I usually try to carve out time on Wednesdays so that I can go in the youth room and just pray and worship and spend some time with God, asking God, hey, speak to me, praying specifically for our service and praying for students individually. And one of the first Wednesdays that we had come back, didn't know what things were going to look like. Right now we have a little bit better grasp on what things are going to look like on a typical Wednesday night for us. But then everything was still so up in the air. And so I'm praying, God, I want to know what I'm going to see tonight. And and I felt the Lord ask me just a question. It sparked a question in me that, that said, what does success look like? When I'm asking God to move, what's he got to do in order to appease me to think that he moved? What does God have to do in order to check all my boxes so I can say, okay, God moved tonight? And so he said, what does success look like tonight? And so I began to think, and then I thought back to all the, the marks of success when I first became a sixth grader and went into youth. And, and back then, it was about loud music and whatever, from whatever Hillsong United album had most recently come out. And it was about, you gotta have students in the altars, they gotta be staying after service. It's gotta be all about these long altar calls, all of that, and all that's great. That's awesome. But that's what it was when I was first in youth, myself. I remember going to camps and different things throughout the years as a student myself, and it was about packing as many students into the room as you possibly could. And I'm coming back, trying to, to come back. We're in a pandemic and I got no idea how many students are gonna show up and I just don't know. There's so many unknowns, so many uncertain things. And so I'm thinking, I don't know what success looks like for tonight. But I felt the Lord tell me, don't measure it by what you've seen me do in the past. I wanna do something new. This is a golden opportunity for God to do something new. So I finished praying that day I had already had my message ready, wasn't preaching anything about this. And, and when we had our student leaders and adult leaders there for a, a meeting before service that night, I shared with them what the Lord had shared with me that afternoon as I was praying. And I said, hey guys, I want you to know, tonight God is going to do something incredible in Legacy Youth. The Holy Spirit's going to move tonight in Legacy Youth. But I can't leave out one important detail to that. And that one important detail is this, I got no idea what it's gonna look like. But here's what I know. I'm not expecting it to look like anything I've seen before, and you shouldn't either. So we went on with that night, and I preached, and, and we had worship, and then we went, and some students got snow cones after the service, and we just had a good time. And, and I felt the Lord tell me that was it. I didn't get the outward sign that I was used to. I didn't get what was the mark of success in 2010. I didn't get what would have been the mark of success in 2019 because I'm not part of a youth ministry in 2010 or 2019. This is 2020 youth ministry and God's doing something different in legacy youth. And so I had students come up to me and they weren't in the altar after service, but they came up and told me, man, God really spoke to me through that. And that happened multiple times and God has been moving continually in legacy youth since then. And it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be in legacy youth and at legacy church. God is doing something different in our church. That's a praise report. God's doing something different in 2020 in Legacy Church that he's never done before. And as a church, I think we're doing a pretty good job moving with God and allowing him to work. We're rolling with the punches of 2020 and saying, God, this moment, there's something better. We know you did cool stuff before. We know you did amazing things before, but right now we're in 2020 and you're about to do amazing things again through all this. You're still doing amazing things. That's us. That's the church you're a part of, and it's a great place to be a part of. But you spend a couple hours a week here at church, maybe. You have a life that goes on. You have 
uh, work that you potentially go to in the day. You've got time at home. You've got time outside of church. You're here maybe Sunday and Wednesday. And God wants to move in a significant way in your life through the Monday and Saturday. God wants to do something new because I know if you live here in Arkansas, I'm talking to a broad range of people, but if you live in Arkansas in the United States of America in 2020, your life at least a little bit has been shaken up. It's not what it was in 2019. It's different. And you might be trying to protect your sense of normalcy. You might be trying to protect what's normal to you when really God's saying, forget what was normal. I'm doing something better. Like God did in this story in the Bible. He's saying, if you will let go of what's normal and go into what I have for you, just look for it. I'm doing this all around you. Spiritually, you have a life that goes on outside of whatever service you come to on Sunday morning. God's doing something amazing and something new. I want for us as Legacy Church, not the building, the people of Legacy Church, to go on with God and whatever new normal he has for us. The amazing things that God has planned. God has incredible things planned for you and for me, and I'm excited about it. And so I want to pray right now for us, Legacy Church, that we would go with God into the new normal, that we would not be the ones who drag our feet, but that we would go with God into all that he has planned for us, because it's incredible, and I'm so excited about it. So let me pray for you right now. Jesus, I thank you so much, God. I thank you that in the midst of a season where normal is gone for a lot of us, at least to an extent, we don't have what we thought was normal six months ago. At the beginning of this year, normal meant different than what normal means now. And God, I thank you that that is not bad news, but it's good news. It's opportunity, God, for you to do something incredible and new in our lives. I thank you for that, Jesus. And I pray for everybody who can hear my voice right now. God, would you speak to them? God, would you reveal to them what new plans you have for them and how amazing and incredible they are. God, give us hope to know that the plans that you have for us are incredible. The plans that you have for us are going to take us so much further. What you did in the past was amazing, but what you're going to do in the future is better than all that. I thank you for it, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for Wednesday in the Word. I hope this message gave you some hope. hope it touched you. I hope you know that God has some incredible things planned for us, and the normal that we lost is nothing compared to what God has planned for us. Thank you so much, Legacy Church.